This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. So, Bezrat Hashem, we're trying to, to make something happen, something big happen here today. There is a... Um, basically it's a, it's a class for women, so um, I don't mind. Women usually they talk about the men, right? <laughs> no? Never been a woman, like... Uh, So, I have something to tell you about women. It's a women class. So, everyone is blaming Chavai Menu Eve on the sin, right? Everyone? She was the one that been um, attempted, and she was the one that failed Adam Arishon, the first man, her husband. written that the main sin of Adam and Eve was that they were not um, keeping themselves in, in, in holiness until the time of Shabbat, to be together in Shabbat. They have been created by the Creator, by Hashem, right before Shabbat. On Friday they were ready to accept Shabbat and they were not able to hold themselves because of their love and their lust for each other. They couldn't resist it and they've been together before of Shabbat instead of waiting a little bit longer until Shabbat will come and then it will be a holy day and then their time together Adam and Eve will be in purity, will be in holiness and blessed. But they couldn't resist it and they were together before Shabbat came, something that we can understand. Like they just met, they were both beautiful and charming, everything was so heavenly over there. Like they couldn't hold themselves, it was like amazing wanted to be together. Okay, we can understand it. And then it's written that Eve was walking in heaven and then the snake came and started talking to her. And she had been attempted. She failed in her conversation with him. And things happened. I'm asking you a question. Why? Was she walking alone in the garden at all? If she just found the man of her dream, her man, the man of her life, and everything was so wonderful, why after the day been together, she now needs to walk alone in the garden? They're supposed to hold hands together and to keep on marching toward Shabbat. Like, okay, we messed up, we failed, we couldn't resist, we couldn't hold ourselves together, and we failed together. We found ourselves in this situation together and now let's do tshuva and accept Shabbat together. But it didn't happen like that. What it really happened was that she found herself alone after that she failed with her husband Adam. And now while well, she found herself alone walking in the garden so she failed again. And I think that the reason that she failed again was because that Adam let her go on her own was not able to stick to her and to stay with her when they realized that they couldn't resist. And that's the problem of men. And that's the real source and the real reason of sin. And that's the real reason of darkness that we're experiencing today. It's not women to blame, it's men to blame. And even if we're choosing not to blame, we need to still understand what's the real cause and the real reason for all the darkness and all the exile that we're experiencing.
when the Creator sent us to this world, He never mentioned the snake, the sin. He sent us to heaven and we thought, oh wow, it's going to be so amazing. And it was supposed to be. But no one ever told us there's going to be a snake over there. And all of us were very innocent. When we're coming to this world, we are very, very innocent. We're coming and we're hoping. And we think, oh, that person, that man, that boyfriend, first boyfriend, whatever, always having that dream, marriage, wedding, it will be so heavenly, it will be so amazing. And like having a child, it will be so awesome, so great. And like you find yourself stuck with another problem like for the rest of your life. <laughs> and, and it's an issue and it's in reality and we are facing it and we want to hold in faith and we want always to be pure and we want to be strong and we want to be believers but we are facing situations that we cannot deal with because we never been warned on those situations no one told us that after that we will be with the love of our lives, we're going to find ourselves alone again. No one told us that after we will enjoy having a baby and bringing a child to the world, we will have to be his babysitter for the rest of our lives until he's 55 or like <laughs> 70, like in the worst case. Like, it never ends. And no one is standing by our side to explain to us what's the real deal, what's really going to happen. Everyone are helping us to drown in the sea of fantasy, in those wild dreams of fake happiness that never takes place in life. And we, because of those disappointments, over and over and over, losing trust, losing faith, losing our confidence, even in the things that we do believe in them, even in those amazing things like Hashem, like the Torah, like the good, like hope, like the truth, whatever, justice, loyalty, trust. With the years, with the disappointments, with the pain, with the, with the sorrow of loss, we start doubting the basic, the foundations of our being. And this is why I'm saying that we need to understand where things really started and not just very fast to go and blame, and especially not to blame ourselves. The Ariya Kadosh, that he was the main righteous man of his generation, he lived something like 500 years ago. He said that the soul of Eve, of Chavai Menu, finished her tikkun. She completed what it was needed from her side to fix 500 years ago. That's it. Now the question is, so why women are keep coming reincarnation in different lifetimes again to this world? Why are they keep on coming if they completed? Something is lacking. What is that thing? They have not prayed enough for their husbands. Now we'll try to explain. The soul of Adam Arishon, the soul, the male soul, the soul of Adam, have not completed her tikkun at all. Still many things to fix. No one needs to tell you that, like it's obvious, you can see that. It's simple. Many things to fix. Many things to fix. But, on top of the fact that we men are not complete yet, have not fixed what that we need to fix, still there is a deeper problem. What's that deeper problem? That we cannot fix it without our wives. A man that reaches 40 years old and is not married, 100% of the times he's crazy. 100%. Women when they're reaching 40 and they're not married, they can be hard. They can be disappointed, they can be sad, but not in 100% of the case, cases crazy. Men are losing their minds without a woman, without a wife. But women, like they're suffering without having a good friend, a loyal friend, the best friend of their lives by their side. But they are staying who they are, 
even though that life is not what they hoped for. Women got something fixed inside of them, and it's the soul of the first woman, of Eve, and it's fixed. And that's why they're not losing their mind in those crazy ways like men now. Of course that you can see different examples out in the streets, but we're talking about the main soul. Because also the souls are mixed with certain particles of female and male inside of them. You have souls today that are blend, that are mixed, and not 100% woman, 100% men. And this is why it's hard to tell always in every situation exactly what's the condition of that soul and how far it is from completion. But generally, when we're talking, the soul of Eve, of Chava Imenu, feminine souls, are complete, but they are still in a certain loop that they need to keep on coming to this world, coming to this world to fix something, to do something. And what is that thing? That they have not prayed enough for their husband, for Adam, for Adam Arishon. Now, why they fixed 500 and more years earlier than men? The humility, the sorrow, and the pain, and what did they as women suffered during the generations and the exile, humbled them because that men were not treating women right at all and were treating them with lack of honor, with lack of respect, like property, were abusing them, were raping them, were molesting them, were humiliating them, were destroying them. So women reached very fast to the lowest place of humility and being humbled completely to understand exactly who they are, what is their job, what is their mission. Like that we know that in life, when we're facing challenges, when we are facing difficulties, very fast our eyes are being opened to reality. Like you can go in false dreams and to waste 20 years of your life or 40 years of your life in hopes and expectations and dreams of false only because you're not suffering only because you are not with your back to the wall but in the moment that your life is on risk in a risk that you are facing a critical situation a domestic problem in that moment very fast your mind is focused on the real purpose of how to save your skin, on how to save your life, on what really needs to be done right now. Only a critical situation is waking us up back to reality. And this is why we are going through those sufferings all the time. And women that experience much more sorrow during the generation, because not only in the exile and in the war and in poverty and in hunger and in plagues they were suffering, also in their private life, in their houses, they were not being treated properly, with honor, with respect, with appreciation. So because they were suffering much, much more, they've been humbled much, much more, they came to that realization, to that deep understanding of what the real purpose is, what the real truth is, that we are here to love and to care and to dedicate, to be honest people, to be like, say, normal people, good, kind. Because women suffered so badly, they came to that deep and meaningful realization much earlier than men. And men that for years lived in that dream that they are the kings and they are on top and they are in charge and they are the supporters and they are whatever, stronger, whatever, and also established so many rules to keep and protect their position that they are the only ones that are allowed to judge, that they are the only ones that are in charge, that they are the only ones that can give testaments, that they are the only ones that... and on and on and on and on and on. By that, they lost their connection to reality, to the real purpose of life. Now, when an honest person finds another person that is struggling, he cannot let him just struggle and let him be, let him go and suffer. Just a righteous person finds himself responsible to the condition of his friend. 
So when women, even though that they suffered, but still, when women reach that level of humility and completion, they were supposed to pray for their men, for their husbands. But something happened that women felt neglected and were disappointed and felt rejected and couldn't find, them, find themselves praying for their husbands. Like they felt, I need to take care of myself right now. And this is why today in our generations, the, the women are, are the, how you, how you say, Mama Deisha, how, how you call that concept in English? Like status? women. Status? The, like women's uh, rights, rights, women's rights is rising, rising, like feminism, because women received from heaven a voice, permission to talk. Now, men, of course, don't like it because it's forcing them to confront the truth, to deal with reality, and reality is something that they're running away from more than fire. Because for years and generations they're just trying to erase it and to rewrite history in a way that they will be the most successful ones and noble ones and righteous ones and the heroes of all generations. But in reality, how many redemptions and how many salvations took place and we know and close to those salvations that happened to our nation by righteous women and not only in verses. In reality, not only to say by the merit of righteous women we've been redeemed and by the merit of righteous women we will be, like, go to the facts. You will see that really it happened so many times. There were so many righteous women that sacrificed themselves for the whole nation, not only for their families, not only for their children. And those women opened the eyes of the whole generation. And we have many stories like those. So... Women, even though that they suffered, and women, even though that they experienced loss, still they are holding the responsibility of being a good friend to their husbands for the soul of the first man, even if that soul of the first man disappointed them. Because the fact that you see someone else that was wrong doesn't allow you now to go on a war against him. The the fact that you now receive the microphone, the voice that you allow to talk, that women, how we called it? Sorry, blank. <coughs> I'm a man. <laughs> women rights. It's a blank. It's, it's a man's <laughs> blank. It's not, nothing to do with it. Like I can try working on it though. At least I can, can be happy with myself that I'm working on it. Representing the man with, uh, with a drop of humility. In reality, I am a very inspiring speaker going out in the world and talking to thousands of people and made so many tours to the U.S. and back from Israel and had a center in Jerusalem and many centers we opened here in the U.S. And I met thousands of people and my videos are going very wide in, in the internet, social media and on. And to be honest with you, 90% of the wisdom that I'm sharing is coming from my wife. They met, truly. I'm, I'm, they met. I'm just saying the truth. I don't have now, like, I don't need to praise her that she will know what I'm thinking. She's like 99% of my classes she never hears. And when people are telling me or telling her, let's say, like students of mine that are friends with my wife, and they're telling her, wow, your husband, he said this and that in the class, or she's like, what are they talking about? Like, it's, it's our conversation. That's what we're talking in our house. And she's even humble to think that it's our conversation when really it's me finally came to the understanding that I need to sit and be quiet and listen <laughs> because she's so wise. Really, she is so wise and, and she's so sensitive and she's so honest and, and like so many great things in hell that for years that I was thinking to myself that I need to leave the house, that I need to do things, that I need to do tshuva, that I want to do this and like... I was, I was shutting her mouth, I was not letting her express her real thoughts, her real deep and honest 
and 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 wise thoughts of the intelligence that is treasured inside of hell she was like move to the side woman i need to do my thing and for years i couldn't even hear her voice but in reality when i start listening suddenly all the real ancient wisdom of even my being that was denied by me that was not accepted by me that i couldn't hear inside of me started to bloom started to grow started to find place and it's only because that i was as her husband as a man able to give her the place that she deserved i wish i hope still still working on it and messing up on a daily basis okay. but at least like i said trying trying now the thing is that there are many verses and there are many books that have been written, many lectures, many rabbis that spoke, and many things that we heard until today. But we are erasing those ones that we doesn't feel comfortable with, or that we are rising and putting like um, highlights, those ones that we find it more easy to work with, and we're running forward with those verses that fit to our lifestyle, to whatever, no, I need to do this, I need to do that, like, yes, whatever, yes, and like, and, and that's it. And you run with those things that, I call it tova, it's all for the good, yes, I do the dude, Rabbi Nachman of Wesler, and that's it, you're Jewish, you have a stamp, everything is perfect, like, but you are really not connecting yourself to what that Hashem wants from you, <coughs> to what that the truth is screaming and demanding from every individual in his own life, in his reality, like, be truthful to the inner voice, to the voice of your soul, to who you are. To who you are means be aware to your beloved ones, to your surroundings, to your family. You have children, they have a voice, you have a wife, you have a husband, you have friends. They have a voice, they have feelings, they have needs, they have their thoughts, they have their will. Like, she, she wants something too? Like, really? Should I care? Yes, like, you must. And those are things that when you are running fast and speeding up, speeding up in life, self-centered and trying to achieve and thinking on yourself, being self-centered, you cannot feel. You're erasing people, you're removing obstacles, and those obstacles can be your beloved ones. And when you're doing that, you're erasing more than 80% of the Bible, more than 80% of the truth. You're just plastering and 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 disqualifying and erasing and removing and because of that we cannot feel the blessing in our houses because the creator couldn't find a vessel to hold the blessing except of peace he couldn't find with all of his power and with his deep wisdom and with all of his understanding he couldn't find another vessel to contain the blessing except a peace now what is peace man that doesn't want to have real peace that doesn't really want to sacrifice their desire their goal their individual success will start telling you what peace is all about and they will never gonna know what real peace is all about because real peace is something that the couple is having together. The real peace is not what the, the man will tell to his wife that means that they will have peace, and if not, so she's a bad woman. Peace is when both of them are sitting in peace and in love, and both of them are respecting each other and loving each other and having fun spending time together and communicating and talking and sharing and laughing and consulting and talking and making each other wiser and giving advice and supporting and loving and whatever and all that, like all those things that like we can barely find in our lives why because even those ones that are going and teaching and preaching and claiming to have peace never even tasted the taste of peace with the tiniest teaspoon like they never even felt what peace is all about because how how can you know if you have peace in your house when you will see the bliss blessing of Hashem when you will have a wife that she herself 
will testify on you that you are the best friend in the world, that you are the most loyal person in the world, that you are not upsetting, that you are not disrespecting, that you are not destroying, that you are not humiliating, that you are not whatever, then you will have peace. Not when you will claim and you will explain that you are a respecting husband, that you are a nice husband, that you are treating your wife nicely. You are not the one to say those things. It's your wife's time voice to like to say the truth. Now, Hashem is warning us from those things. Hashem is warning the men from those things. And He's saying, listen, your wife, she is your soul. You are soulmates. Now, what does it mean? When a couple are actually one in the nature of their creation, it means that they both are holding the same soul. Now, if both of you are holding the same soul, so you need to be spiritually connected to each other. And when you are spiritually disconnected, so it means that you don't have peace. When you both have peace, you will feel the feelings of your wife. Your wife, she will feel your feelings. Now, when your wife, she feels your feelings and you cannot feel hers, when she is considering you and she cares about your needs and your will and your desires and your hopes and your dreams and your goals and you are not even aware to which color she likes, to which smell she loves, to where, where which one of the places that she wants to walk and she wants to see, which views she wants, she like rather, what it makes her really happy. Like when you are disconnected from all of that, so there is no peace. I asked one of my students that he was talking to me about his relationship with his wife. I asked him, do you know the favorite color of your wife? He didn't have a clue. He didn't have a clue. And you know where I came to that understanding that I should ask him and to open his eyes? Because my wife, she told me once, maybe a couple of years ago, she told me, you don't know which is the color that I like the most. And I can tell you for sure that it's purple, 100%. Like, I know it. But then she told me, and if you will say purple, so I'm asking you, how do you know that I really like purple? Maybe I'm wearing purple and I'm choosing purple because I know you like purple. How do you know? You don't know. I don't know. I'm stuck. <laughs> now, a friend asked me, okay, so how am I going to know? I told him, you should want to know. If you will want to know and you're really going to care, you will want to know, so you will investigate and you will ask and you will care and you will pay attention and you will hear and you will listen because you want to. But before you want to and you just want to fulfill your obligation and you want to be a Chovash Lombait, you want her to shut up and to let you keep on doing your thing in life, you're never going to have Shlombait. You will never going to taste from Shlombait. And this is why I opened and I said that the man need to take responsibility on the sin of his wife in that way that he should be aware to the fact that the sin started because she was walking alone in the garden. As long as your wife, she can walk alone in the garden and you let her walk alone in the garden, something is wrong between you. What were you doing? What was he doing? He was doing tshuva. He was learning Torah, he was going to the mikveh, he was doing amazing things. Okay, let's judge him only favorably, only good things. In reality, you let your wife walk alone in a place that was not safe, even if you thought that it's heaven. In reality, you were supposed to stand by her side, it's your wife. And you took that upon yourself to stand by her side and to respect her, and to love her, and to cherish, and to whatever. And he was not there. When she been confused, when she been, been lied, when she, when she been, been, been destroyed in that humiliating way that she was by the snake, he was not by her side to protect her. And this is something that only he needs to do, Chuvan. Only us, only men, must take the responsibility 
that if your wife she's somewhere else and you're not aware to that place you are disconnected from your wife from your side and it's not her fault to blame you cannot go and blame her that she's going and trying to find happiness in different places when you are that one that is commanded to make your wife happy make your wife happy is a mitzvah midoraita it's an obligation that is written in the Bible in the same level as Tfilin, as Shabbat, as Kashrut, as all the rest of mitzvot midoraita that are written in the Bible. V'simach ishto, make your wife happy, is an obligation of the husband. So no, now my wife, she's a domestic depression woman, she's a hard case, she's a problematic, she's always said, okay, so it means that your job that Hashem gave you is larger, is bigger. Maybe Hashem has a lot of faith, a lot of hope. Maybe Hashem believes in you that you can make it. And that's why He make your challenge so huge, so problematic. Because you can do it. Because Hashem believes in you. You cannot exempt yourself from the obligations that have been put by Hashem that you claim to believe in. You cannot blame her on being sad when you're not making her happy. And we men must take that responsibility. So now, of course, you're asking yourself, come on, so that's not a class for women, that's a class for men. Go talk to the men. Great, you're right, but I told you. Why women are keep on coming to this world over and over? Because you need to pray for your husbands. Because you must understand that we, me, I'm talking about myself, I'm not able to do it on my own. I will never wake up to realize and to see and to understand the things that my wife opened my eyes to see. I'm so ignorant, I'm so self-centered as a man, I'm so selfish, I'm so busy in my own thoughts, my mind is working in such high volume my desires and my craziness and my hopes and my fears and my pressure is so high that I cannot pay attention to what it really goes on in front of my eyes. I must have someone that will be more sensitive, that will be more realistic, that will be more truthful, that will help me to wake up and it's my wife. Now you have your mission with your husband and like we said for that man even if his wife is in such a low place and she's so depressed and broken, it's still his responsibility to stand by her side. And he cannot find excuses for why he is not doing it because it's hard. Hard means work harder. Hard means find another advice, find a way. Break your head, pray, do tshuva, scream to Hashem, go to a therapist, go to someone that can consult you, find someone, specialist. Whatever, try to find an advice to your big problem. Also from the opposite side, from the side of women. Even if you are in a relationship and there is no one to talk to, he's not there, he's not available, he doesn't listen, he can't feel, he doesn't recognize, he cannot hear you. You're talking and screaming and whining and crying and praying and... It doesn't exempt you from your responsibility to that relationship. Now, I'm not saying kill yourself for it, but I am saying pray for it. Try to find the inner point of your heart, what really the Creator expects from you to do. And don't give up on Him because He's lazy. Pray that he won't be lazy. Don't give up on him because his lack of sensitivity, because he is emotionally blocked. Don't give up because he is suffering and his children are suffering and you are suffering and the world is suffering and you have the power of women to pray and to be answered. And women have that power. It's written on Yitzchak and his wife Rivka that they both couldn't have children and they went to the roof to pray and the clouds the salvation came from the side of his wife from the feminine side and there's another story in the Gemara on another couple of righteous people that they were praying for a salvation and that salvation came from the feminine side from the woman's side they saw the signs that it came from the wife's side women got 
nine times more power of prayer than men. It's written, ten amounts of conversation, of power of speech came down to the world. Nine of them been took by women. Now you know exactly how you can sit and talk for hours and hours and hours and know what I, like the men that are able to talk more than you are females, like in reality, in reality, to the power of speech to talk so much, it's a feminine thing, like if he's yapping, so okay, the dress suits him, it's okay. In reality, women, they have the power of speech. Now, we need to understand how to use that power. That power of speech is the power to make changes in heaven. It's to bring the redemption that we're all hoping for. The problem of our generation is that the troubles and the sorrow and the distractions of this generation are surrounding us so badly that we gave up on the redemption. We're all just trying to cover the mortgage, to find the right school for our children, to, to furnish the house, to, like, to, to fix that plumbing problem. Like, we are stuck in the details and we lost our vision, we lost our dream. Now everyone are saying we want Mashiach, we want Mashiach, we want Mashiach, but really we all want just to solve our own individual problems. We don't really understand what Mashiach is all about. Like in reality, what that you want is to have enough money and to be healthy and to live long life and that your children will find Shiduchim and that your husband will like be normal and, and, and like simple things that you are asking and you are saying, okay, I want Mashiach because I want to have all my salvations and I also want my friends, all my friends to have their salvation. So let's call it Mashiach and let's call Mashiach and Mashiach when he will come, all our problems will be solved. It's not true. Mashiach cannot come like that. Mashiach is not a savior that comes with, with suitcases of money and giving money to the poor. This is not Mashiach. Mashiach is not a person that is coming and giving everyone advice how to solve their Shalom Bayit problems. No. Mashiach is a deep thing. Mashiach is a power of understanding of a generation. Mashiach is knowledge. Mashiach is an awareness to the truth. Mashiach is a life spirit that is passing between people and they're all waking up to understand something big. That awakeness is the spirit of Mashiach. Now we must come back to that spirit that is hovering above the water of Torah and to fill our own barrels, our own buckets with that spirit of inspiration, of hope. To start praying for a real salvation to our people, to all of the believers around the world, and not only Jewish, only Israelis, whatever, talking about complete redemption of the wide world. To achieve that thing, for that we must take ourselves out of our own individual bubble. We must take ourselves from our small life, even that our life are very big, like it's too much on our shoulders. Sometimes. We can deal, but still, if you will see in realistic eyes, you will understand that everyone else around you are not having it in an easier way. You have your issues and she have hers and everyone are going through their things. And you could never deal with your best friend's problems, even if you think sometimes that you could. You cannot. There are such things that are so painful and makes people so humble so destroyed and so ashamed of themselves and you wouldn't take those cases on yourself you would choose your sack in the end of the day and, and, and wouldn't take no one else's problems to you to, to take care of so when we're realizing that we are all on the same on the same place on the same boat everyone are, are, are sailing in the same direction it can give us the power to understand what the real salvation is all about. What really we need to pray for. To pay the mortgage, to have good shiduchim for the children, to be healthy. All are great things. But all are coming, all those lackings are coming 
from a certain point and that point is a certain lacking that we have in our faith in our inner connection to the nature of our creation to who we really are we are souls we are spiritual children of the Almighty we are children of the Creator of the world of the one that made bunny rabbits from nothing squirrels from zero earth and sea and sky and clouds and changing weathers and amazing sunrises and sunsets out of nowhere he's a creator and we are his children it means that when we will wake up to understand who we really are we will have the ability the access to all of that ancient power to that ancient wisdom that can change the world that can peel the husks and coverings of darkness that are blocking the light of goodness that is the real essence of life in this world and we must reconnect ourselves to the real divine truth the nature of our being to who we really are now as a woman you should find your connection to the Creator as a man I need to take responsibility on my place and to become that man that the Creator expects me to be and you as an individual person need to find your mission in life and to go all the way with that and not to back off because of difficulties because we went through so much already and those sorrow and, and hard hours that we went through in life must wake us up to understand that it's in our power to complete the mission and to win in that battle even if it looks so hard even if sometimes it looks impossible if it looks impossible you need to take one step back and to rethink about your whole life and to try to fix and to take that problem from a different angle in a different way with a different approach to work on yourself to reconnect yourself to the real mission of your life and not to let yourself drown in the sorrow and in the humiliations and in the difficulties uplift yourself from your life from your bubble from your pool and take yourself to your spiritual nature to the real nature of your soul of who you really are in the nature of your creation and work from that place and bring salvation bring salvation to your beloved ones and go and pray with no end and go if you need to pray for yourself to work on yourself to build and establish your own faith in yourself to uplift your self-esteem to respect yourself before you wait someone else to respect you to respect yourself to recognize your true self and to respect it to appreciate who you are in the nature of your creation and to go with your qualities and with the precious stones that the Creator treasured inside of you and go and spread them in the world go and give your advice to people go and love go and respect go and fight for the poor Go and be the voice for those ones that are not able to speak out loud. Go and be a shoulder, be, a, be, 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 be that, that person that will save other people. It's in your power. And you don't need to be righteous for that, and you don't need to be rich for that, and you don't need to be pure for that, and you don't need to be a genius for that, and you don't need to have connections for that. You just need to be sober and awake to your surroundings because your mission starts in your house. Your mission starts with your daughter. Your mission starts with your best friend, with your neighbor, with your husband, and then with your colleagues, with your friends to work, with the people that you meet in the grocery store, in the supermarket, in the park, when you're flying, when you're coming, when you're visiting, when you're praying, when you're in, in, in shul. Your mission is in front of your eyes. And you need to work on yourself to recognize your mission. And when you will recognize your mission, 
you'll understand that it's in your power to accomplish it, to succeed. And when you will accomplish in the first circle, then you will grow and you will expand. And you'll start recognizing other missions further ahead. And then you will see how spiritually and emotionally you're growing and you're achieving more and more. And your prayers, when you will be aware to your real nature, to who you really are, will be much more effective and stronger when you will believe in yourself, when you will work on your real self-esteem to recognize who you really are from inside. Who you are is not your shape, is not your body, is not your colors, is not your accent, is not how much money you have. All those external and physical things are only your vehicle that is taking who you really are to the next mission. You are your soul. You are the soul of the first woman, the feminine soul of the world. It's you. Dressed in your body. And now, dressed in your body, it's got a, a, a job. It's on a mission. Go and work. Go and complete your mission in your house with your beloved ones. And then go and expand it. But as long as you're praying from that place of being that broken and depressed and, and, and disrespected woman that you physically are, your prayers cannot be accepted. Because you are not yourself, so you are not even talking. You're just whining, you're just complaining. You're just showing your lack of faith, your lack of understanding of who really you are and what are the real powers of your soul. But when you will recognize yourself as a spiritual being and be aware to the good that lives inside of you, out of that deep understanding, your self-esteem will rise and you won't be arrogant and you will just be happy with your share and you'll be proud of yourself and you'll find the understanding, the, the ability to go and to influence other people in the same way to help them to find themselves, to be able to express their hearts, to express their emotions, to say their needs to stand up for themselves and not to be scared to be who they are. And that's our mission. That's our only mission. To work on ourselves to be who we really are and with that power to go and to help other people to find themselves. We don't need to convince all the world to be Jewish, to be Hasidish, to be foolish. We don't need that. That's not our mission. To make Baalet Shuva, to convert people. No, it's not our mission. Our mission is to open the eyes of people to recognize that Hashem is already with them. You don't need to bring Hashem. Do you know how to bring Hashem? Yeah, I'm bringing Hashem. Ooh, where is Hashem? What are we talking about? Hashem is all over the place. Hashem is in and out, surrounding and hidden. Like, where is Hashem? Everywhere. So how can I deliver Hashem? I can just deliver the truth while being honest. By being truthful and not lying. And not being scared and terrified. By being truthful and brave and strong and my real self, I can deliver the truth that I believe that the truth is Him. Okay? Okay. Can I go now? <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And blessing everyone here that all your prayers will be accepted and answered immediately. That you will believe in yourselves, that you will see wonders and miracles in your life and in the life of all of your beloved ones. Amen. We hope you enjoy this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.